Today I'm going to be showing you how to remove a coolant temperature sensor from a 2001 to 2006 Hyundai Elantra. Um, they're pretty much all the same even if you got like the different grill with the GLS or the limited edition. It doesn't matter, they're all pretty much the same. Um, it's in here and that's it right there. This sensor right here. Kind of see that little golden thing sticking out. So what I would recommend you do first is remove the battery because you're working with electrical components. Negative is actually aftermarket. I don't know what the originals look like with this car. Um, if they look the same, if they detach the same, whatever. You know how to remove your battery holster, I would hope. If you're trying to work on your own car, that is. And next, you want to unplug couple of these sensors just get them out of your way I had to kind of use my finger to push that back and push down on these little tabs you see how <clears throat> wiggle it a little bit I mean these Hyundai's are fun to work on because they have so little space and yeah, I just remove that one from its little hinge right there you didn't really have to remove the sensor itself so get those out of the way and use 10 millimeter sockets um, simple wrench will work remember lefty Lucy whoever owned my car lost one of the the bolts so I just put in a Phillips head there but yeah if you ever lose one of these bolts a Phillips head will work too and then if you got bigger arms than me I mean I got pretty small forearms and it's nice for working on Hyundai's, but I know some guys have bigger arms and it sucks for them if they're trying to work on their car. Um, but you could also remove this um, right here. So you just got a little more space to work with. But for me, that's just fine. Like, it's perfect. The second thing you want to do is lift your car. So always remember to put your jack stand right on these little lips right here and make sure it's evenly aligned. You do not want to miss alignment. That makes your car. Move your reservoir cap. Keep that somewhere safe. Move your radiator cap. Push down, then spin it. And it goes all the way out. Ooh, looks like I need more coolant anyway. So obviously when you drain your coolant, you're going to want to buy new coolant. And you're going to want something to catch it in. Now the way you drain your coolant is you get a Phillips head screwdriver or a flathead. And let me see if I can see it. There it is. Challenge is getting the camera on it. Alright, so that little piece right there, that's where the coolant drains out. I am going to go ahead and use my Phillips but you're going to want to put this right under there and actually this Phillips is a little too tall so I'm going to have to get a smaller one especially when considering working on a Hyundai you want to get one of these smaller ones because they barely have any room to work on them so you got your drain pan underneath and you got the coolant plug so you go ahead and plug that in and you spin it to the left Take that out quickly because you don't... Oh, snap! Good thing I'm kind of failed right there. Um, don't use one of these. I did. Got in the driveway. Now, thankfully, it's not too much. But better to do it right. Use a bucket. All right, now we take out the sensor itself. You're just going to want to break that off. Um, not literally break it, but... <clears throat> yeah, this thing isn't big enough. Um, as you can see, this new one right here, I could put my ratchet on that fine, and it 
it latches to it just fine with this new one. That old one down there, um, can't really see it from that angle. That old one, it's, uh, it's not latching, you see those very edges, it's just barely grabbing the very edge of it, so I'll either have to get a ratchet, I mean a wrench, which I don't have, I'll have to break off that plastic piece, so that's what I think I'm going to do. I don't necessarily recommend doing this with the new piece, but since this is an old piece and I don't really need it anymore, I'm just going to break that right off. You have to break that piece down a little bit more. Now, if you can get a taller one, that'd be recommended, but, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of a broke college kid. Part of the reason why I work on my own car. So I got my ratchet on. I just... <clears throat> All right. Well... It ain't gonna budge, so I... If you have problems with it not budging, you will want to get an extension on your ratchet. For those of you who don't, who don't know, um, this is the physical property of torque. So the longer distance you have, it's the distance times the force. So since I've increased my distance, I've made it significantly easier to... Uh, As you can see, mine looks kind of corroded. It used to just, um, the temperature would randomly go up, but I had a mechanic check it out and he said, you know, temperature's not actually going up, this thing's faulty. So we're going to go ahead and put in our new one. Now it's going to be a little rough to put in at first because it's got that little seal around it. I don't know if you saw the white seal around it. Well, that's just so it doesn't leak when you put it in. Put it to the right. Once you do get it threaded in, which it'll be challenging. It took me a minute. Um, just kind of skip through that. And then, just keep screwing it until it refuses to go in anymore. That's in there pretty tight. It will not go any tighter. Right, believe me, I've tried. All it does is just make my hand slip. And that's when you know you're done. So, plug the sensor back in. So once you've got it all plugged in and snugged, you're going to want to go ahead and put back some radiator fluid. Otherwise your car's going to overheat. I got this stuff for um, Asian cars. Put that cap back in. If you don't put that cap back in, uh, all the coolant's just gonna leak down the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and start filling up the reservoir. I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it like it is. I can see some on the surface. Should be good enough. Don't want to overdo it because this stuff does expand when it gets hot. Now, take your tools off of the engine. Remember, engines get hot. Put your battery back on. We're gonna go ahead and um, 
let the coolant run through the system, and then burp the system. When you're lowering your car, you always want to make sure you lower it very slowly. Now, I know a lot of you guys probably already know a lot of this stuff. This is just in case there's any new mechanics who are using this for a small fix that they think that they can fix. Figured, may as well give it a little 101. So in order to burp your system, if you want to go ahead and burp it, um, first you're going to want to not be in the garage like I was, but you're going to want to be on the outside. Um, make sure none of that exhaust just fills up your house. So you remove your radiator cap, and you just let it run with the radiator cap off and your coolant uh, reservoir tank also open. You run it running like that for a while. Now I've already done the process, I didn't really film it. What'll happen is it'll bubble up and you can have your coolant nearby and just keep pouring it in as it goes down. Eventually it'll stop. Right now my um, reservoir level is just at that line, that top line that says full. And there's just a little bit of liquid right there, so right now my radiator's at a good level. But yeah, you want to make sure that you get all the bubbles out of the system. You could even try squeezing this too, but I'd recommend using gloves because that stuff burns. That was my little tutorial. Anyway, I hope that helped you. And remember to properly dispose of your fluids. There was a little bit of oil left in that oil catcher, which was a dumb idea. Remember, oil catchers are not good for that. Use a bucket.